Hello, my name is Lexi Davis. I'm a self-discovery coach, a yoga and meditation instructor, a love enthusiast, and a really playful human being. I serve people through my business, Alive to Enjoy, and this is Heart Snuggles, a holistic wellness podcast where I invite guests to drop into their heart space through authentic conversations and compassionate intentions, all in mini cuddly episodes, hoping that you connect to your truth in the most authentic version of yourself. I hope you enjoy. Welcome to Heart Snuggles. We hope you're having a great day today. We're so happy you're here and we're going to have a really nice mini episode with a new friend. So I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Hey, so um, my name is Bobby Adlington and I am an artist and a, a branding, a high vibrational branding consultant and also a social meditation facilitator and meditation practitioner myself. Ooh, what, tell us what a social meditation practitioner is. So it's someone, broadly speaking, someone who practices social meditation. Um, and social meditation is a relatively new meditation practice that um, brings people together uh, to practice as a group and it involves aspects of, of sharing um, parts of our experience verbally with each other during the practice. That's so cool. I have never experienced that, but like just when you said that, it's like such a deep breath, like that just feels so right. And I am so into connection like you, and I think there's so much value in that extra layer of like communicating with others about our experiences and just being in the same space while we're doing these things. So that's so cool. Yeah, it really is. Um, I was really lucky to uh, discover the practice kind of by chance. I was just looking for a meditation teacher that wasn't like thousands of dollars. And um, the group that I have been learning and training with called Buddhist Geeks run by a really wonderful uh, couple of teachers called Vince Horn and Ryan Olkey. And this practice is just such a wonderful way to add onto the top of your normal individual practice. But it's also an amazing way to learn because um, you just learn by being with people. So just purely the act of coming together understanding the instructions and then doing them with everyone you just learn so much from being in people's presence you know yeah um, we always have so much to learn from one another and teach one another and it's just this that beautiful circle motion <laughs> yeah so over the last couple of years i feel like my own personal meditation practice has deepened so much uh, and I've, I've learned so many things from all the different people that I've practiced with, or even when I facilitate practices with people, I learn so much from them because it's not really like a teacher student relationship. It's more of a just facilitation and sharing the practice together. I love that. There's not like this hierarchy because in life there really shouldn't be, we shouldn't be pedestaling anyone. And just because you're really knowledgeable in one area doesn't mean that you should be above you. It's like, we all have stuff to teach each other. So that's such a beautiful thing. And I'm so happy that you're learning it and you're teaching it and you're spreading it into the world because I definitely want to try that and think more people should try that too. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm really, um, a big advocate for it. And, um, I guess the best thing about it is it just, it's a practice that gives us the chance to just be together and, you know, even just, just sitting together and having these moments of silence or me just saying one word and you responding with one word, we get to kind of know each other on a, a different level that, that takes our mind and like, even, even below conversation takes that out of the way. So, um, I guess you could reflect that currently there are many clashes of opinion or schools of thought in the world that we perceive outside us. So it's really refreshing to just get a chance to just connect with people from a, a heart level or a felt embodied space. <laughs> this is making my heart snuggle so much. 
<laughs> love it. I one of my favorite ways to communicate is body language. So it's so cool mm. that like you're almost teaching people how to read and like tap into that because a lot of people are so unaware of people's body language, but it's so easy to read someone and like, yeah, just there's so much communication that's not said. And so that's so beautiful that that's what it, it encompasses. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Um, we, we often talk about, you know, well, because what will regularly happen during a practice is we'll, we'll have a really aligned collection of experiences that we talk about afterwards, or even particularly like if we're expressing what current emotion or mind state we're feeling you'll get this wonderful like alignment of the things that people say and it really makes you feel like we're all having the same experience and then when we discuss it afterwards that really is what happened everyone's like yeah I was literally feeling this and this is what I felt and and then we 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 have discussions around like why does that happen you know and I think because quite often it will be through zoom like this so maybe it's not so easy to infer full on with body language you know but i think there is a, a certain amount to be said about the conversational gaps or how we do speak or maybe you can see my hands now and so that that is there um but then on the other side of that discussion i think there's actually some kind of like energetic connection that happens that we don't necessarily always share or are aware of and so that's come to the fore quite a lot why do you think that we don't talk about that because i find a lot of time you know you have energetic connections with people and we're too afraid just to, to even mention it or say something so why do you why do you think we don't feel comfortable talking about that yeah it's a great question and even even at times um in my role as a facilitator in in so, so the Buddhist geek Sangha, they have an online Sangha and I facilitate like two or three times a week practices. So I just say that I'm going to be here and anyone that turns up, we can practice together. And so I feel like there's a, there's a degree of responsibility for me there to, to make sure everyone knows and we do the practice in a safe way that everyone's comfortable with. And then afterwards, I like to encourage a discussion or a, a debrief because I think it's valuable but I feel a, re a responsibility or an uncertainty whether to broach this subject that you just mentioned because um yeah maybe maybe it's seen as as slightly too esoteric or it it kind of touches on a degree of of spirituality that people maybe don't want to discuss or would be uncomfortable discussing so it's a great question why we don't I mean maybe maybe there is or maybe I have a perception that it's an unwelcome discussion point for people who are maybe like more in a materialistic um, world or rationalistic world mindset and um yeah, so I, I, I don't know. It's an interesting one. I, I, but I do find myself wondering, sh is it okay to say this to this person, you know? <laughs> yeah, I just had a thought when you said that. And I think that it's, we've, we are uncomfortable doing this because of how we feel they're going to perceive us after we do that. Like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is what I'm trying to say. We make it mean something. So when we say, I feel this energy, then we automatically assume like, oh, that means X, Y, Z. So that could be yeah. another area of it too. Cause what you said is so true because that's very, it's not, it's not tangible. You can't see it. It's yeah, not material, like you said. And then I think also that it's like, we make it mean something. And so then we don't want to miss, have it misinterpreted or whatever, because we're not clear on that. It's just we're simply an energy and energy is always shifting and moving. Yeah. Yeah. It's the inference maybe of, what does it mean about me if I'm talking about uh, a receptiveness or an openness to that type of thing? Yeah. <laughs> so cool. So how, what is, um, how did you, I guess, start with all of this, like in the spiritual world? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, my, my kind of like glib, um, my glib sort of first answer is, you know, like obviously, Rastafari when I started smoking weed when I was you know like 14 or 15 
uh, even though I didn't realize that's what was happening. Um, but but then again, I also I also went to a Church of England school. And um, in 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 the UK, and uh, I was in a church choir. So like you know, there's there's no doubt that like elements of spirituality were like just naturally there as part of my upbringing. But actually, my response to that at a young age was very much to reject it. Um, but these days, I clearly see quite a strong differentiation between spirituality and religion you know and so then i i think back to my sort of like jokey point about getting into like reggae smoking weed and you know like engaging in thoughts of rastafari and something other that i could align with was was more about just exploring different facets of my personal experience whether it was like getting high or you know just enjoying the vibes of a song you know um but but genuinely i would have been other than doing that which was a, maybe a kind of accepted way to do it i would have very much been in more in the like the rationalistic materialistic camp for like pretty much like most of my life up until you know um I guess my mid thirties or something like that, I would say. Um, my reflection on it now, now as I, if I look back is that I was kind of secretly doing spiritual practices, but you know, I didn't really oh, know yeah. that, that they were. So for instance, um, stretching, I, I used to like love stretching and I would, I would actually got into running as an excuse to be warm so I could do a really nice long stretching routine afterwards you know and so like clearly looking back at that that was a type of meditation for me and I always felt so much better after doing that in the morning um my day would go a lot better um but but explicitly what really got me into all of this actually was free diving wow um, well yeah it's so much breath work yeah and also awareness of of your your body awareness of your relaxation and i think the breath work is is key is really key there you know um like you say and uh and also that actually that's when i began to do um i was really lucky being in bali at the time and i i was like cool i've always loved the ocean um which is obviously like another secret kind of like spiritual kind of act or practice you know <laughs> going into nature um which i've been doing for years but uh so then i was like cool i'm gonna learn free diving it's gonna be this sport i love sports but they actually ended up being this this wonderful gateway into a much more intentional spiritual life you know and um begun to like consciously meditate and engage in practices like breath work or yoga and yeah, really just sort of allow myself to be be open to, you know, intentionally pursuing that. And then that's kind of what culminated in me looking for a meditation teacher. And then I and I found Buddhist Geeks and, and begun the social meditation. So that ties that up quite nicely. <laughs> <laughs> that's a beautiful journey. And it's it's so cool. I like how you said that because it's so true. Like we often start doing the things and we not we don't even realize that we're doing it, and then we like understand it through different messaging like i remember so many concepts like i couldn't put in words and then i'd read it and be like wow this all makes sense <laughs> and then you can like learn more based on once you have the wording for it you get to dive into it more yeah i wonder i wonder if you could share an example of that i'm curious yeah. um i guess that's more i guess i'm more talking about like things i've patterns i've noticed in myself like yeah for against for instance my fear of abandonment so i would always mm. Um, I had a fear of intimacy and like really getting close with people and it I didn't understand why but like I saw this happening and then I would notice how I would like push people away when they got too close and then I finally like listened to this podcast and it was like fear of abandonment this is x you do this 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 and this this and I'm like ah oh, that is that makes sense <laughs> yeah and so I guess that's like understanding a way that other people relate to that 
so that then you can uh, engage in that deeper understanding for yourself. Yes, yes. It's cool. It's just nice. I don't know. I love, I love learning. And um, yeah, this whole world is there's endless to, to, to do. And it, at first it was overwhelming, but now it's super exciting that you can tap in in so many different ways and go so many different areas once you start opening up this box. Mm, you mean you mean like the box of spiritual exploration yes yeah 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 i really feel very um lucky to be be here in bali with the sort of you know the the just in almost infinite range of things to explore that are on the table here it's such a healing place every time i go i feel so grounded and like Oh, it's just really magical. And I love how intentional they are. Every day they put out their incense and their flowers and they're like constantly blessing their land and their people. And it really mm. creates a nice space. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head there. Like just, I, I guess this comes back to the point that I made about learning by just witnessing or being with people, you know, like, just simply being here and witnessing your neighbor or your landlord or who, whoever you're you're staying with or just your community doing these these acts of you know care devotion and e even just like on a on a practical like physical level they're looking after the space they're cleaning it they're making it look nice they've taken time but then clearly it just goes so much deeper and yeah, it really just, you just feel like you just absorb that, that genuine love and care for everything that, that exists here. I agree. What are some things you've learned while being in Bali about from the Balinese culture? Wow. Um, the, the fundamental thing is this kind of like openness and uh, acceptance and I guess ultimately like sharing of love um, and it, it it happens in so many ways like we we touched on the ceremonial um, rituals that that they have here um, but for me the simplest way that it manifests is is just like smiling and eye contact you know like Mm, I would drive around my neighborhood or my my local village and it's it's pretty much guaranteed that I will catch catch someone's eye and smile with someone at least once but but more more often it's like three or four times and that'll just be on a short five minute bike ride and you know they say hi and they joke around with you like that's my favorite part like i just be walking down the street and they just be silly with me like random strangers are so playful and so authentic yeah. yeah 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 it's like there's just this automatic openness awareness and joy and willingness to interact and that, presence i feel too yeah yeah and it's just so refreshing compared to experiences that I've had of living in in different parts of the world or maybe even where I grew up you know where you might you might be rather than like the anticipatory openness of connection that I feel here you might I might have been existing in a state of concern or fear for like going out and walking around the streets of London possibly you know as another example so different um mm that's awesome that how long so how, how long have you been there um wow maybe it would be five years almost in august do you have a visa yeah yeah i do yeah i have i have had multiple ones over the time of being here and just renewing one at the moment that's so nice and so what's it like living, living on an island like that? I guess it's a country, but I mean, <laughs> isn't it? Well, actually it's, it's an island. It's, I mean, 
it's an island within the Indonesian Federal Republic. So um, it's a, it really it really is it's my like dream life here. You know, um, I'm able to go to the sea. I live about two minutes away from the sea, um, which which really I've discovered from uh, being here is is su such an enriching aspect of my life you know being able to go and be in the sea whether it's surfing or free diving um on a regular basis and just just getting down to the beach for a sunset you know in the evening is something that i can do for you know even if even if i've missed the sun and it's dropped but i still get there i can just get there for like five ten minutes just take it in and i just feel this wonderful sense of um yeah just like openness and a refreshed energy and and yeah richness and and the wholesomeness just simply oh. from that one act of going to see you know the the sunset sky and smelling the waves how else have you found the water healing i agree with everything you said by the way it's the ocean mm. like the sunset, I, I was talking with a friend the other day, it's like, how is the same sunset so pretty every day? You can't, you never get sick of it. Well, I mean, it's not the same every day. Well, I think it's that's, not... the, that's the trick, but yeah, I know what you mean. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, a while back before I'd even really been to Bali, I, I was, I've been, um, I used to do a lot of, well, and I still do a lot of photography and and artwork around the sunset and especially like in Europe I would I had a van and I would travel around Europe primarily along the coast and just camp up on the beach and just watch everyone arrive for the sunset it's amazing how everyone just arrives and it's almost like they they go to the edge of the water as close as they can get to the sunset you know and just just take it in um I've forgotten your question now actually that's okay. I said, how have you found the ocean or water healing? Um, wow. Uh, well, I guess, guess, I guess ultimately it was kind of like the start point of, of the spiritual journey that I went on that we talked about. So yeah, kind of with free diving, it's, it's interesting because it's, on one hand, it's it's super relaxing being in the ocean for me. I'm I'm very used to it. I don't find it stressful. It's very relaxing. Um, but it also covers a whole range of things, you know, like from being relaxed to being extremely uh, powerful and vigorous. Like if I'm surfing, you know, and um, so. It, if it's if it's a chilled day I will come out just feeling like ah kind of like cleansed I guess in a way but just like ah, just fresh and reset I guess that's it so it gives me a nice reset feeling um but then also like I've had other days where I'm like stressed out or out or angry at something and this the sea is rough and the waves aren't good, but then somehow it ends up sort of like just, you know, smacking a bit of sense into me or just, I don't know, I, I get to this, maybe you get to this point where you just surrender and just go, oh, okay. And just, <laughs> it humbles you, my friend. Yeah, she always says it humbles yeah. you because you're like, you have to surrender, otherwise it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, precisely. It's funny, I, I've noticed a pattern actually, like on, on those difficult days when you're trying to surf and it doesn't feel like things are going your way. You know, I'll put up a fight and I'll try and make it work. But then I've always noticed, I get to this point and I just go, ah, oh, all right, it's not happening today. Okay, I get it. And then, and then I get the sickest wave straight away then after that point. <laughs> It's funny that we know that and we continue to tackle it the same way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's great. I love that you're aware, so aware that, or like you have, the ocean isn't just one thing. It's like, it can be, it's so extreme, but in the most beautiful ways. Yeah. Yeah. 
And what other elements of nature do you like connecting with? Hmm. I really love, I love rivers as well. Um, I'm really fascinated by, uh, yeah, just there's, a, you get a lot of rapids and stuff here or, um, yeah, just the, the shapes that water makes when it's flowing out. Um, I love, I love doing a lot of filming of around the rivers that come out into the beaches here, just sort of like static shots, just capturing that sort of like movement. And I find it captivating. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I love the hills. I haven't actually climbed the volcanoes here yet, um, but I love driving through the countryside here. I mean, I grew up, I was lucky to grow up in the countryside just west of London, sort of like what you might class as sort of like typical lush green English countryside. And I really get a similar vibe from the countryside around here, you know, like the, the lush greens and quietness. So I, I actually love driving between Ahmed and Changu, even though it's like a two and a half hour drive. It's just, yeah, I just love it, you know, taking in all the scenery. That's one of my favorite parts too about being there. Is you, I never minded the long drives because you see so much and it's all so pretty and it's oh, it's so refreshing. I find that too. Yeah, yeah. So is this your full-time job? Um, when you say this, what do you mean? Med meditating? Oh, um, no, actually it's not. It's, um, it's, really, it's really like... Um, one of my passions but crucially it's in it's informed the way that I work in in what you would call my full-time job which is um high vibrational branding oh. so I yeah so I create I help I help um spiritual and personal development practitioners to go on deep dives into the richness of their identity and give them the kind of active listening and compassionate space that they give their clients so that they can reflect on really the the core details and even the undiscovered surprise bits that we find that that make their identity so so wonderful and powerful for what they do um, and social meditation has really given me the tools to hold and interact with people to, to really go to this wonderfully connected place of creativity, you know, where it's like we're expressing and we're having a dialogue outside of our minds. And so then what, what emerges from that kind of place of like, connected um i like to call it connected consciousness or collective consciousness is is really really wonderful to behold when that stuff starts coming through um yeah so that's that's like one of the real defining parts of how i work and then when we find that really rich beauty from within with my clients I then work very closely with them to turn it into brand concepts and visual identities. So they come out with like a, a readjustment of the meaning and the foundation. And then that turns into uh, something that works for the, the outside world that they're going to be putting it into um, whilst maintaining the integrity and then is looks beautiful and, and works. That's so cool. How did you, Thank you did you just come up with that or how what that is amazing. Thank you. Um I mean I I've been a I've been a visual artist like for ever since I you know was was at school and I started doing stuff that I was always gravitated towards the visual arts. Um How old are you? <laughs> I actually don't know. Oh, I'm 39. Okay. Wow, yeah. you look so young. <laughs> Thank That's you. amazing. Okay, yeah. So, so for a number of decades, I've been doing that, and um, over the years, I, I've I've done I do do my own art, my own art projects, and my own artwork. But 
but this this evolved as like a commercial application of my creativity and and really it's about bringing this creative process that i've that i've like harnessed for myself and putting it into like good use to help those who are doing amazing work but they don't necessarily have the self-referential abilities which is something that i think a lot of people struggle with you know like really understanding what's so amazing about what i do they just do it but they so i help them find that and then um yeah this process is it's yeah creating these tangible brands and identities so that these people that are doing amazing work can then it can then strengthen their impact and help them reach and appeal to more of the right people so that that sort of ripple of good continues so heartfelt and amazing like what a that's the such a special gift to give to someone that is a giver you know and um yeah as you say that I'm like I don't know I don't even know what mine is so it's that's a very smart and like smart but also so thoughtful thank you I mean you you're you're you could do one of my idea workshops if you think it's worthwhile yeah. taking a step into that so I for sure will yeah so my website is autotelic.art and if you go on there and look at the idea workshops you can you can see the uh, options that I have on there and that's something that you can do by yourself just with your phone and it's intended to be it's like an extrapolation of, of the process that I take people with, but it's all in, in a phone. And so you, you'll have videos of me and I'll guide you through just these first steps. And the idea is you don't need to prepare anything. You just come at it completely fresh and then you just speak, you just start speaking and everything comes out. So magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what other workshops do you have? Um, I have another one called, I don't actually have this on my, my website right now, but if people are interested in it, I can send them the link, which I call a creative blockbuster. You better get that one up there. <laughs> I know. And so this is for people who are stuck with something. So it could be a creative block or it could just be they're procrastinating on something no one gets stuck <laughs> <laughs> i know especially not when they do this <laughs> yeah and so then they follow it online and um it's just got some steps to gradually get them to a place where there's a really strong intention and then there's some momentum to just start moving on it and yeah, I've had some really wonderful responses from people that found it helpful. One of my friends, Aviva, found it really helpful for um, one of her study assignments, one of the, the pieces that she was writing for her, her study that she was really stuck on. Um, yeah, other people have found it really useful for doing more uh, visual artwork and even writing as well, music and writing. Wow, amazing. I'm so excited Thank to check you. this out and I hope so many other people check it out too, because I'm sure they're wonderful. So you already told us yeah. your website, how else can people find you if they want to? So I, I also have an Instagram channel for my business, Autotelic Arts, which is, um, I think it's just Autotelic Arts. I'll find um, it in the bio. Yeah. And then, then my own personal Instagram is Oblong Ting. Um, so I guess, you know, that you can share that in, in the link for this video as well. Um, and if you, if you, um, are interested, you can join the Buddhist geek Sangha and sign up for, and come and join the, uh, practices that I facilitate in there. I'm also going to be, uh, creating a. Uh, some social meditation programs and courses of my own that I'll be running so you can either contact me directly if you're interested you know I can do can do one-on-one -on -one social meditation work or if you have a group that you'd like to practice or kind of understand the practice then uh, you can book me for a group session and then I'll be running some 
uh, some courses that people can sign up for from my website as well in the future. Incredible stuff. I'm so, I'm so happy that we connected and thank, thank you so you, much for Lexi. taking the time. My pleasure. It's really wonderful to connect with you and chat more. Yeah, thanks. Have a good one, everyone.